This is the Citadel Gray Line, where we look at all things Citadel Bulldogs and more. John Rawl with Jeff Hartzell of the Charleston Post and Courier. Glad to have everybody back here on the All Dogs Show. And we'll talk football as the Citadel Bulldogs lost again last weekend in Cullowee. Another home game this weekend that we'll walk you through here on the program. And then we've got some baseball and some big basketball news to get to all right here on the program that covers everything Citadel. I am John Rawl, and g- glad to have you back on here. want to remind you that the Citadel Gray Line is presented in part by IPS Packaging and Automation, as well as Big Red Palmetto Dot Store. We've got trivia questions. That's right, two of them to get to momentarily. We didn't have a winner last week. We'll go ahead and ask two trivia questions here this week, but we don't have to ask this big question. Where the heck's Jeff Hartzell? Because Jeff's always on standby like a good Citadel alumnus or cadet, although he wasn't one of those. But he's here to talk about the Bulldogs nonetheless and to fill us in on what's going on with the football team as it struggles to get a victory here in 2021. Hello, Jeff. Welcome into the Gray Line. John, how are you today? I'm great. Thank you, sir. And you are looking dapper. Your official Citadel Athletic Department Adidas brand there. I like that. Well, this is black and white, so I don't know how official it is. Yes. Well, Mike Houston made black kind of cool there at the Citadel when he was the head coach several years ago. But, Jeff, we're kind of in mourning for Citadel football right now as they struggle to get victories. Well, yeah, it's not been pretty so far. Uh, 21-14 loss at Western Carolina uh, last week in the battle of the uh, bottom dwellers, as it were, in the Southern Conference. So, uh, you know, a similar story to the the first two games, a, uh, a slow start and a uh, comeback that comes up short in the end. Um, but, you know, this season is uh, unlike any other, as we've mentioned many, many times. And I just wanted to go over something with you that kind of tells you uh, where the Citadel is right now. And all FCS teams are in this boat to some degree, but the Citadel, as we pointed out last week, has made it harder on themselves with some of the suspensions, unnecessary suspensions that have gone on to uh, to limit their roster. But against Western Car- – if you go back to the Army game last year, the, the final game of the fall, which the Citadel played pretty well in that game, against Western Carolina, they were missing – from that Army game, they were missing – starting quarterback, a starting wide receiver, the starting left tackle, the starting right tackle, starting A back, starting B back, and another starting A back on offense. On defense, they were missing a starting defensive end, a starting defensive tackle, two starting linebackers, a starting quarterback, starting free safety, starting strong safety, another starting cornerback, and the starting punter, who was also the holder. Hmm. So uh, that's 16 players from the final game of the fall who were starting, who were not available against Western Carolina on Saturday. So really this is a whole different team as we before, but it really came to uh, into sharp focus against Western Carolina with the number of uh, starting players from the final game of the fall who were not available in this game for various reasons, including opt outs, quarantine, and uh, a couple of suspension situations and injuries. Willie Eubanks, the All-America linebacker, and Clay Harris, the starting fullback, were not available due to injury. So uh, it's a whole different team. Normally, they would be making the mistakes they're making in spring practice with nobody there to watch. But now it's in a real game on TV where everybody can see uh, the growing pains of this team, uh, which is, you know, it's they're considering this the 2021 20, season, all one season, but it's a whole different roster and it's a whole different team. 21-14, L. Sid loses in Cullowee. Now losing their, I think it was it a, a ninth. Pro, ninth straight loss, a program record. Of course, there's an asterisk there because they played those three FBS teams in the fall. This is an unusual time to say the least, but – Regardless, Citadel people don't like losing certainly this much, and uh, 
and it's just heartbreaking the way they lost this game here once again, Jeff. It wasn't on the first play of the game that Western Carolina got a touchdown, but it was on the third play of the game, and all three plays to lead them into the end zone were running plays. Uh, I guess that's progress, right? <laughs> they went from giving up TDs on the first play to they made it all the way to the third play against Western Carolina. Yeah, but it's ridiculous the the slow starts they're getting off to. Uh, Western Carolina had a 38-yard run on the first play of the game. And uh, as you said, they needed only two more plays to get into the end zone. And it was 21-6 to at halftime. But And, you know, once again, the Citadel outplayed their opponent in the second half, but they're just too far behind uh, to catch up, especially with the triple option offense, which uh, it takes them seven or eight minutes to score. <laughs> you know, they don't, they're not getting those big plays to Raleigh Webb this year so far. So it's take you know they in the they open the second half with about an eight minute drive they get down to the two or three yard line and they come mm -hmm. up empty they throw a pass on fourth and goal and it, it's incomplete and so they wasted eight minutes right there uh, when you're when you're even or ahead you love to do that to take eight minutes off the clock and even if you don't score you know at least you've taken eight minutes off the clock when you're behind taking eight minutes off the clock and not getting anything. Uh, is not helpful. No, it's not. And now, although they tried to fight back there in that second half, once again, third straight time against Southern Conference competition, the Citadel just falls. And we'll just look at just this spring now, 0-3 on the season. And as you mentioned, in the in the cellar of the SOCON right now, the just a tough, tough break, as you mentioned, all those key losses with personnel and such. I know it's frustrating. Did you have a chance to co catch up with Coach Thompson? Yes, I did. And, uh, you know, his his theme after the game was we brought this on ourselves. You know, we some of our guys didn't do right. They have to serve suspensions, and this is the price you pay. Uh, you're not having all your best players available uh, for various reasons in that game. They'll get, they'll get those four starters back. Uh, against East Tennessee State this week, but four other players will be suspended. We don't know who those are yet. Uh, I think, and uh, Coach Thompson didn't tell me this, but I, it's just what I surmised that they're going to have to suspend these players at some point. John, you still with me? I am. Okay. You said they're going to have to suspend these players at some point? Right. My screen went black. Okay. Well, um, anyway, they're going to have to suspend all these guys at some point during the season, uh, four at a time as the season goes on. And I think they thought um, maybe we can get by Western Carolina with suspending four starters. And that's what they tried to do. It didn't work out, but they will have those guys back now for the rest of the season. So, um, you know, <laughs> on top of everything else, Coach Thompson is having to balance – when he's going to suspend <laughs> oh, uh, just another headache that he did not need. Now, did he have a weekly press conference like he would normally do in the fall? He does. It's on Zoom every Monday. Okay, it's on Monday. Okay. I haven't seen that and posted. I, I guess the Citadel I guess the Citadel's not posting them on YouTube. I'm not sure I see. about that. Uh, well, we, we like to know what's going on. And again, Citadel loses their third consecutive SOCON game here to start the 2021 spring season. And we'll go on from there. We'll talk more about this upcoming game that the Citadel has coming up against the Bucks this weekend. But Jeff, while I was going through, first of all, got to give praise to that fairly, the newcomer that got some love in that game against, what was it? Uh, Chattanooga, Storch. Storch had a touchdown in that game, and Colorado also fumbled the ball, and that proved costly because I think just after that, Western Carolina got a touchdown before the first half was over. That was tough, but Jeff, as I'm sitting there, uh, things just not going good here. Even, Jeff, I don't know if you saw this on the ESPN broadcast, they didn't even have the Citadel's logo correct in the game against <laughs> Western Carolina. They were using the Chattanooga Mox logo for the dogs, so that, that was not a pretty thing, but in my uh, astute observation of the game, Jeff, I know that the Citadel's an FCS program. I know that I'm a fairly tall fella at 6'3", but boy, these players for the Citadel look so small. 
And Jeff, I went through the stats and I found all six human beings on the Citadel roster that touched the ball either by carrying it or receiving a pass in this ball game. Only one player is technically over six feet tall. That's Raleigh Webb. He's six foot two. Jalen Adams, 5'10. Nathan Storch is an even six feet. Cooper Wallace, 5'10. As I mentioned, Webb at 6'2. Najim Najoku, 5'10. And Cole Owens, I think, caught a pass. He's 5'11. Jeff, am I, am I being a little too harsh? Is the Citadel a fairly small team in football in the FCS ranks? They are a fairly small team, uh, but where it really matters is on the lines, obviously. You you don't need six foot three fullbacks unless you're Alabama running the type of offense they do. Um, or six foot three A backs. Uh, it would be hard for guys like that to function at those positions, in my opinion. Now, Jalen Adams is smaller than Brandon Rainey. He's a different style player. Uh, but, you know, Citadel one big with Gene Brown. A quarterback back in the day, and he was probably about five foot eight. Mm -hmm. So, um, but where it does matter is on the lines. And uh, as you point out, the Citadel is often smaller uh, than their opponent, just as they are in basketball. Yeah. When you watch a basketball game, uh, they got Hayden Brown at center at six foot five and uh, battling some six ten, six eleven guys. So uh, that's just part of it. Uh, one reason you go to the triple option is you don't need to recruit six foot six tackles. You know, you, you can get by with smaller tackles. You don't need a six foot four, 220 pound quarterback with a rifle arm. Uh, those, those are hard to come by as uh, the South Carolina Gamecocks can attest. Yeah. So uh, that's one reason you go to the triple option. It sort of broadens your recruiting pool of players as it were. And uh, you can function with um, smaller players at different positions. But, uh, you know, the defensive line is one place you'd like to be bigger than your opponent. And uh, the Citadel, uh, they were missing uh, their starting defensive tackle, all-conference defensive tackle against Western. And uh, that made a big difference, as you saw Western just shredded the defense. Their running back ran for 220 yards uh, against the Citadel. That's not good. I do know that there is actually, I think, a true freshman playing on the defensive line. He's a freshman out of the panhandle of Florida from around Panama City. Do you know who that is? Carson Hatchett, and he's yes. actually done a pretty good job so far. So uh, good for him. And, you know, that's what Brent Thompson has to hold on to right now is this is going to pay off in the fall when they get their entire roster back, uh, except for the seniors who move on, obviously. So uh, that's that's what he has to hold on to at this point uh, as the Citadel goes through this, you know, tough period right now. Um, playing in the spring was always going to be tough, uh, and the Citadel's made it worse for themselves with some of the situations they've gotten themselves into with suspensions and things like that. So, uh, yeah, it might, might be, end up being a long spring. Mr. Britton also is getting a couple of stops there on defense. I, I'm seeing his name pop up more. He's played well uh, also, and that's one thing Brent Thompson said this week in his press conference. He's, he's got to accentuate the positive, look for the positive. You know, Nathan Storch, you mentioned him. He carried the ball 33 times in his second college game. Uh, so he, um, Over 100 yards, he right? Twice. Over 100 yards, fumbled twice. Uh, he got one of them back. He lost one, and Western Carolina scored on the next play, as you mentioned. So uh, Jalen Adams also rushed for more than 100 yards, made a bad mistake uh, when he was getting sacked and tried to throw the ball away, threw it straight to a Western Carolina player who returned it for a touchdown. Uh, the play was called back. They ruled that Jalen's knee was down before he threw the ball. Kind of an iffy call there. I don't know that went the Citadel's way, but they ended up having to punt anyway, took a big sack on that and had to punt. And that was when they were trying to come back in the second half. So that was a really costly mistake uh, right there. So um, three games that the Citadel had a chance to win, three games that they came up short. And now they have to pick up the pieces and move on to the ETSU Bucks, who are coming in after a tough loss in Johnson City. We'll have more on that in just a second. But we did mention earlier – that we actually did not have our trivia question from last week answered here, our knob knowledge, courtesy of BigRedPalmetto.store. So we're going to 
bring up two questions here this week. We'll ask the one again from last week, first person that can correctly give us the answer to this. We'll win a $25 gift certificate to Big Red Palmetto Dot Store. And then we have our second one we're going to fire up here this week. Our question that we're going to repeat here this week, and this has to do with Core Day coming up next week on the Citadel campus. Name the governor of South Carolina back in the 19th century that is credited with being the founder of both the Citadel and the Arsenal. And this governor was the 59th. That's hard to believe. He was a governor in the early 1800s, and he was South Carolina's 59th governor at the time, serving from 1840 to 1842. Tell me who this is, and you get a $25 gift certificate. All you have to do is text your answer to 843-779-8496. And there's actually a connection to that Cal College in Pickens County with this same governor. And uh, we'll let you know the answer. But you got to tell me who the governor is. All you got to do, text that answer to 843-779-8496. And that's housekeeping from last week. We've got to get an answer for that before we move on to this week. Now, Jeff Hartzell, we're talking Citadel football. We've got Citadel baseball here on the All Bulldog Show. And you mentioned earlier about how we're missing some personnel. Well, one of the guys that is not suiting up on the football field is Ryan McCarthy, wide receiver for the Citadel football team. He's playing baseball only here this spring. And it got me to think about there's been a long history of Citadel football and baseball players, the combo, and that goes back a long way. We can see evidence of this right now, and Tony Skoll, the head baseball coach at the Citadel, was a great football player, a team captain in the early 90s, and also part of the Citadel baseball team, and other great players that have played on both football and baseball. You can't do that normally, uh, or you, if you do, it's pretty hard. Well, right now, McCarthy had to make the decision to only play baseball here this spring. So our second trivia question here this week in the long line of players who play baseball and football at the Citadel, name me a former Citadel football and baseball player who was a first-team All-American and Southern Conference Male Athlete of the Year in 1990 as he helped lead the Citadel baseball team to a 46-14 and record and to the 1990 College World Series. He's known for his slide, the famous slide around the catcher, the 8-7 World Series come from behind victory over Cal State Fullerton. He was a four-year letterman on the Citadel baseball team with a 7-19 slugging percentage in the 1990 seasons. Had a school record 70 runs in 1990 and also held the school record for hits in a season. A member of the Citadel Baseball Hall of Fame, a member of the actual Citadel Athletics Hall of Fame, and the Charleston Baseball Hall of Fame. If you can tell me who this 1990 alumnus of the Citadel is, you'll get a $25 gift certificate. And again, he played both baseball and football for the Mighty Dogs in the late 80s and early 90s there on the Charleston campus. 843-779-8496 is the way to get your answer in, and you'll get that nice reward from Big Red Palmetto dot store. And Jeff, please don't tell us the answer, but I, I got a feeling you probably know the answer to that. I've got a guess, okay. uh, and it's, I'll keep it to myself. Yes, you keep it to yourself. But yeah. yeah, just text that in, right. and we'll be happy to answer that question. We do have a couple of questions coming in, Jeff, real quick while we have football. Gregory Coplin is watching and listening to us right now. Gregory wants to know, is Coach on the hot seat? Coach uh, is not on the hot seat yet. I'm assuming you're uh, talking about Brent Thompson. Yes. If this continues in the fall, he will be on the hot seat. Okay. He's under contract through the 2022 season. So he's got uh, – Fall 2021, fall 2022, before his contract is up. Um, but this, it's hard to hold this season against him uh, with the COVID, with playing three FBS teams, with the uh, suspensions that have gone on, which he is the head coach. So at some level, he bears responsibility for the actions of his players. 
they they knew knew better than to do what they did at the bookstore, and now they're paying the price for it. Uh, but yeah, uh, next fall will tell the tale of uh, it'll be a very important season for Britt Thompson. We'll put it that way. All right. Speaking of coaches and hot seats, Duggar Balcom, any news on that front on the basketball front? No official news on Duggar. I expect him to be back with a new contract next fall. Uh, I haven't heard anything otherwise. I think they're working on that right now. And there was some good news on the basketball front as Hayden Brown announced that he will return next season. Of course, he's the fine all-conference basketball player for the Citadel. Uh, Average is a double-double, about 19 points and 10 rebounds for the Bulldogs this year. You know, Hayden could have entered the transfer portal. He could have seen seen what's out there as far as professional ball in Europe or elsewhere. He could have moved on with his life and, and gotten a job. and But he chose to come back uh, for next year. And uh, really a, a important decision for Citadel basketball to have him back. As you mentioned, uh, Caden Rice has entered the transfer portal. He's going to see what's out there for him. Uh, he's gotten some interest already from some Power 5 schools, it looks like. So um, they probably won't have Caden Rice next year, but Hayden Brown will, will be back. And we wish Caden all the best as he's going to have his Citadel degree and will take his talent elsewhere, it appears. And, boy, but the combination of Rice and Brown – Although the wins may be not what we wanted this year, that was a very, very powerful combo there down low. Well, it was. You have Hayden uh, able to shoot outside or take it to the rim. And Caden Rice, of course, was one of the top three-point shooters in the country. Really hit a slump late in the year, though. Uh, I don't know if his legs uh, got away from him or what, but he uh, did not shoot late in the year as well as he did early. But he also uh, had some games where he made some good adjustments and took the ball to the rim and w- was able to score anyway, even though his three-point shot was not going down. So I'll be very interested to see how Caden does at the Power 5 level. You know, a six-six guard who can shoot the three, uh, a lot of teams could use that, obviously. Well, unfortunately, it looks like we're going to lose one of those two guys, but uh, a, a job well done. And very proud of both of these young men. As wasn't there another so-called senior on the roster for the Citadel basketball team? Well, there were four seniors: uh, Hayden, Caden, uh, point guard Tyler Moff, and uh, reserve forward De- Derek Webster. Derek is uh, planning to go to medical school, so I would not expect him back. I do expect Tyler Moff uh, to come back. You remember him, number thirteen, mm-hmm. starting at point guard. So that would be another uh, – that is not official yet, but that would be another welcome bit of news uh, for Citadel basketball uh, should Tyler come back. And in most years he couldn't come back because those graduate transfers are kind of a one and done. But because of the strange coronavirus year, they're getting two years, right? That is correct. Uh, so they could all come back if they chose to. Obviously, Caden is going to use his graduate year elsewhere, and Hayden Brown has decided to come back. There you have it, Jeff Harsell, Post and Courier, all over Citadel Sports. Jeff, let's move over to the baseball diamond this past weekend. We had a little sweep for the Bulldog baseball team. Yeah, uh, last week they played South Carolina on a Wednesday night, and what an interesting game that was. Uh, the Bulldogs were four outs away from pulling off the upset with a 6-5 to five lead in the eighth inning before uh, USC erupted for six runs. Uh, there in the eighth and won it by 11 to seven and what a game for Jeffrey Brown the senior center fielder from Bishop England High School here in Charleston he went five for five with a triple and a home run and uh, wow what a performance and he's hitting well above 400 right now the the Citadel hitting uh, last I checked above 300 as a team which is a big improvement over last year on the weekend, they swept Davidson, including a 19-0 win on Saturday. And I believe that's the game where Ryan McCarthy hit two home runs. Uh, it, Ryan got off to a little bit of a slow start in, in baseball this year, but it seems to be heating up. Noah Mitchell, a freshman first baseman, has played very well. Travis Lott at catcher. And then, of course, Tyler Corbett 
uh, the all-conference second baseman is off to his usual good start. So uh, Siddle's hitting the ball pretty well. The question is going to be in the pitching, uh, the starting rotation. Cameron Reeves has been really good. Jake Pilarski, the Friday night starter, has been a bit up and down. So uh, it was interesting against South Carolina. They went with a one pitcher per inning approach, which really seemed to keep the Gamecocks off balance for much of the game until uh, until the eighth inning. <laughs> the Citadel put in Gant Starling, who's one of the guys that still has the can throw hard. And I think uh, his 90 mile per hour fastball sort of better matched the bat speed of the Gamecocks. And they were able to get a few hits in that inning. But uh, it was a really fun night at the Joe uh, on last Wednesday night. About 1,500 fans out at the game. Uh, the first big crowd, really, they've had in baseball since 2019 at the Joe. The minor league season was wiped out last summer. And uh, so uh, it was great to see some fans back in the ballpark. And a tough, tough loss, although, as you said, just at, just a few outs away from getting the victory. But still, a job well done. At that time, South Carolina was undefeated. And the Citadel nearly gave them their first L of the year. That's right. And then they went to Texas and got swept. So, um, but the Citadel got a sweep on their end and they start uh, conference play this weekend. They do against the Wofford Terriers coming in for this little bit of an unusual setup now going forward with the Southern Conference. Jeff, all SOCON series are going to be a Friday one game and a Saturday doubleheader. That is correct. And uh, Tony School is not a big fan of that setup, uh, those Saturday doubleheaders can make for a very long day uh, for players and coaches alike. But I think the idea is uh, to get the teams in and out and back home uh, without having to spend an extended amount of time on the road. Uh, as this pandemic is still going on, you know, news is getting better with the vaccines and the, and the cases seeming to go down a little bit, but we're still in a pandemic and uh, th that's the approach they've chosen to take for baseball uh, this spring. But one game on Friday and two on Saturday. Walford, this weekend the Bulldogs will be on the road the following weekend as they go up to Cullaway with a three-game set against the Western Carolina Catamounts. Again, that's Bulldog baseball. Again, a great series sweep over the Davidson Wildcats this past weekend. A much-needed series win for Tony Scholes ball club and again we're still looking for an answer to our trivia question we don't have that answer quite yet if you know we have two trivia questions right now on the table got it set out right here in front of y'all come on now first one is who was the governor of south carolina in the 1840s that's credited with being the maybe founder of the citadel back in 1842 and that second trivia question is name the citadel bulldog baseball and football player who helped the citadel to an amazing 1990 baseball season where they went to the College World Series in Omaha. And this guy credited with the game-winning slide around the catcher against Cal State Fullerton, and he was a great baseball and football player, member of the Citadel Athletics Hall of Fame and the Charleston Baseball Hall of Fame. And I think he was from the Charleston area, if I'm not mistaken, and uh, class of 1990. Very popular guy there. And if you know the answer to either one of those trivia questions, Text that answer right now. Operator standing by, 843-779-8496. We want to hear from all y'all. Let me also let you know that the Citadel Gray Line, we couldn't do this without the support of IPS Packaging and BigRedPalmetto.store. IPS Packaging is a name that you can certainly trust since all the way back in 1976, the year of our bicentennial, Jeff. IPS Packaging and Automation has been providing manufacturers and e-commerce companies with the very best packaging products and automation in the industry. They offer a complete line of packaging products from stretch films and 3M tapes to corrugated boxes, strapping, and automation. IPS Packaging and Automation will analyze and streamline your current methods to improve all of your packaging process. Call 800-277-7007 to learn more. Or visit the company on the line at IPAC.com. IPS Packaging and Automation is a proud supporter of Citadel Athletics and, again, a Citadel-led company. Glad to have you again. We're wrapping up this show this week as we covered football. you got baseball up and going Basketball, we're kind of waiting to hear any kind of news that might be coming out on Dugra Balcom's future, but we know that at least one of his stalwarts there on the basketball team, Hayden Brown, coming back for a fourth year 
and that's great news there for all the Bulldog basketball fans. And again, you got baseball in action against Walford here this weekend. Jeff, let's uh, house cleaning here. Anything else athletics-wise or school-wise that we need to be uh, uh, in the know about? Did you see that uh, the Citadel was an answer on Jeopardy? Jeopardy. I saw last it. Week? I did see that. It, that is not uncommon. I, I think mm-hmm. I've seen the Citadel on Wheel of Fortune. Uh, you know, it's a popular place, Jeff. It really is. And so, and the, uh, the young lady got the answer right. Uh, yeah. I was very impressed. Yeah, that was that was good. In fact, a, a friend of mine who went to another college let me know that that was on there this week, and I just had to remind him, "Hey, when was the last time your college, which is a, which is an SEC school, made it on Jeopardy?" And uh, they hadn't. So we were, we're defeating the SEC right now. And that was a little bit of a hard question because the Jeopardy question actually had the arsenal, which we educated everybody right. about the arsenal last week. Maybe that's what, Jeff, that, is that how you knew the answer? <laughs> the question on Jeopardy actually had the arsenal as part of the question there. And the, I, I didn't see it live. I saw a tape a video clip on Twitter. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, the young lady actually got the answer right. And, of course, the Citadel made news in another way. This week, not so good. Uh, you might have seen uh, the Capitol riots involved a uh, freshman Citadel cadet. Oh, I did not know that. Who was arrested this week. Uh, I believe he's from the Rock Hill area. So uh, we'll have to see uh, how that turns out for him. I'm just trying to think of the timeline. If that riot happened January 6th, was school not in session that week? I don't know. Yeah, I thought they <laughs> It was on a Wednesday, to- wasn't it? It was on yeah, it was a Wednesday. Definitely on Wednesday. Yeah, it was on a Wednesday. Yeah. But uh, yeah, uh, yeah, not smart, not smart at all. Um, but uh, that that is uh, was that in the Post and Courier that particular? It was. Item? I think that makes three people from South Carolina who've been arrested uh, so far for their part in that uh, unfortunate incident. Yeah, yeah. There's there's. Lines you don't cross, and that's something you don't uh, need to be doing is uh, going into an, a federal building if uh, you're not supposed to. Uh, Jeff, anything academic? Are you, are you, is Baston Hall, you know about that new building they built, is that, is that now open? Have, have you heard? You know, I don't. I think it is. I okay. think I saw some pictures of it, uh, and it looks great. Fantastic uh, that, facility. That is right there kind of near Johnson Haygood Stadium. Right, right. And um, – so yeah, you know, the I was just thinking the last time the Citadel won a football game, uh, COVID nineteen was not a thing, no. <laughs> and there was natural grass at Johnson Hagen Stadium. So uh, a lot has changed since the Citadel last won a football game. A lot. Maybe in they fact, could change that this weekend. Speaking of that grass at Johnson Hagen Stadium, we put in a couple of requests for a guest here on the show. We're having a maybe because it's springtime, we're having a hard time connecting. But one of the people I've invited on the show is William Sansom, who the field there is named after, a very generous donor to the Citadel. I think he's class of 1964. Hoping to have him on here at the Citadel Gray Line. He's very involved. He's the owner or the CEO of H.T. Hackney, which is a very large distributor. Uh, They distribute to grocery and gas stations across 22 states, I think. And Mm -hmm. he's, again, been very generous. He's the father of a Citadel alumnus who's passed away. And uh, hoping to have him on. Also hoping to get a couple of uh, really heavy hitters in the athletic field. Uh, we've put out requests to Andre Roberts, also to Cameron Cameron Wells, a former basketball player, trying to get him well, on we sh- here. We should mention that Andre just signed a two-year deal with the Texans. Yeah, that's right. Maybe oh. that's why Andre hadn't got back to us. He was trying to get that he's, uh, contract. He's moving, he's moving from the Bills to the Texans. And uh, – one person you might uh, pursue is Duran Lawson, the former Citadel quarterback. He and Andre are in business together. Um, Zaxby's. They oh. run a Zaxby's up there. They own a Zaxby's together. I think it's in the Virginia area. And uh, might be looking to expand uh, their holdings, <laughs> their restaurant holdings. So uh, Duran and Andre hooked up on the football field, and now they're hooking up in the business world as well. So uh, that's good to see. Good for them. I'm a little angry, though, Jeff. I'm sure you might be a little bit like this on some of these businesses. Zaxby's, to my knowledge, this is a corporate decision, 
has totally cut out their dining room experience due to the pandemic. Chick-fil-A, I think, has done the same thing. And uh, I used to love going in Zaxby's, I'll be honest with you. And, well, uh, and eating. We've, been into a, we've been into a Zaxby's. Have you? Because we love Zaxby's since the pandemic began. I, Chick-fil-A, we were not able to yeah. dine in, but we have at Zaxby's. So. Okay, well, it must not be a corporate decision. Everyone I've seen has been drive through only, and they've mm-hmm. got a great I'm – sure, I like to evaluate places often by their bathroom, <laughs> and Zaxby's has a really <laughs> nice, clean bathroom. That's good to hear. It is good, especially if you travel as much as I do. It's kind of important, but uh, they also Very have one, wonderful tea, and so I like to go in. One reason I like a good bathroom, Jeff, is I like to sit down and have about five glasses of tea, and that <laughs> kind of requires a bathroom stop. And so uh, Zaxby's with great tea. But I'm glad to know that maybe the Lawson Roberts chain of Zaxby's are welcoming customers inside because I think some of these fast food places have figured out the profit margin is going to be just fine if they don't have inside dining. Right. I, you know, the line at Chick-fil-A is longer than ever at the drive through <laughs> Yes, it is. And, uh, again, shout out to Kyle Weaver and all those Citadel folks who've uh, done quite well being in the Chick-fil-A world and other business people. We, we love our business side of things here, and uh, good, look, good luck with all that. Jeff, anything else before we get out of here from you, sir? I think we've covered it all. Yeah, when we start talking about bathrooms, you know we've kind of hit a wall here. Thank you, Jeff. We look forward to getting your reflections on the ETSU game. This is now the first of two home football games the Citadel is going to have this spring as ETSU. This Saturday at 1 o'clock, Johnson Haggard Stadium, Sansom Field. Then you've got the next week the Sanford Bulldogs come in for a big game. And I think that is not Easter weekend, I don't think. I haven't. I don't have a calendar in front of me. But the Citadel is going to have a football game the day before Easter. So... Uh, but yep. I think that's going to be a road trip uh, whenever they have that game. But we'll cover it all right here on the Citadel Gray Line. Still don't have a winner, so we'll just have to carry these questions of uh, our trivia question over. Or, or if you want to hit us up again, 843-779-8496. We'll be happy to uh, get you that $25 gift certificate your way, thanks to Big Red Palmetto Dot Store. Jeff, have a great week, and thank you for being on the Gray Line, sir. Thank you, John. All right. And again, we'll be right back here next week with everything Citadel Bulldogs on the Citadel Gray Line, a production of CRM Sports. Ball out.